uh, one more thing like uh, you know that is like i think disturbing so many developers before using flutter and it is about the number of github issues do you think like it really matters that how many how many numbers of github issues are there well i guess i mean it's, it matters to who and for what reason uh it's it's something that the flutter team has to concern themselves with because some CTOs and some engineering directors, when they are reviewing new technologies that their developers ask to use, one of the things they check is, are open issues on GitHub. Now, the problem there is that it's just not a very good heuristic. I don't know what a better heuristic is, but it's just, I don't think that number is telling people what they think it might be telling them. The first thing to keep in mind uh, and I know this has been repeated in other places, but the first thing you have to know about the open issues on GitHub for Flutter is that they also include all feature requests, all feature requests that have ever been made. Absolutely. Uh, so, so it's like, yes, some of those are bugs. A lot of them are bugs, but a lot of them are just wish lists, things that people want. And GitHub does not allow us to separate those two numbers as far as I know. So you're going to see 5,000 plus issues I have no idea if 2,000 of those are feature requests. Yeah. Uh, the next issue is granularity. If a bunch of bugs are like, my app won't start and my customers are pissed off and they want a refund, those are some really important bugs. If there are 1,000 bugs that don't apply to 99% of apps and they're minor details, should you reject the technology just because there are a bunch of bugs filed? And how about duplicate bugs? It's super, when you have a... a an entire world of people filing bugs and people coming from different languages and cultures when they file, which interferes with how they find their own duplicates, you might have 10 versions of the same bug. And it's just tough to realize that it's the same bug in dedupe. So I think the number is pretty much meaningless from my perspective. I mean, I am building apps for customers using Flutter. Uh, there's, there are no ship blockers for me. There are many other shipping apps with Flutter. Clearly, there are no ship blockers for them. So what does that number really mean? I don't know, but I think anyone who uses that to say, we shouldn't use Flutter because of this number, I, I don't think they're being serious about what that number represents. That's true. I, I feel the same because I, I, as you said, like, you know, there are so many duplicate requests in terms of like, I'm not saying duplicate from the perspective of the user who is like writing it, Maybe there is one single issue, but uh, all of them have different kind of uh, experience with that. So they try to create that issue and it's very difficult to track that. Uh, like I have seen rep, like there are uh, people referring to this particular issue and uh, yeah, that happens. And feature requests are also there. So many feature requests for sure. Like I have made many of them as well. So uh, I think everyone has done that. Uh, but but people uh, like try to compare when they try to compare with let's say Re react native or some other similar framework then they get like okay no man this is not a good uh, technology to choose and that is totally i think uh, a very bad way to um, like uh, understand about a technology maybe you should rather see what's your use case you should try to create a poc kind of stuff using flutter and then maybe you are in a better position to decide, right? That's, that's what I say. And yeah, yeah, for sure. You should try it. And, I, yeah. I, but I would also question like, what's the project where react native is actually the alternative to flutter. Uh, I mean, react native still uses the, um, the standard platform UI elements. You're just abstracting them into JavaScript. So if like, if what you want is the creative power of flutter, React Native isn't a substitute. They're solving two different problems at that point. Uh, but yeah, I, yeah, try it. Get, get your developers to use it. Prototype some stuff. If you have an existing company with an existing app, put your heads together and say, okay, what do we know are the riskiest aspects of our app? Take those, the riskiest aspects, and go prove or disprove those things in Flutter. You, relying on that number, and I, let's also put this into perspective. Typically, and by the way, if, I don't know if you can hear sounds outside. If it sounds like a war zone here, there are people have been launching fireworks for like two weeks straight. Um, it's when, you cons when a company considers a new technology, these considerations usually aren't daily. It's like, okay, it's been a couple years 
since we last asked this question, let's see if there's something else we should be using. To say yes or no based on a number on the header of GitHub as to whether you're going to adopt a transformative technology for the next two years is absurd. You are not being serious about the payroll and logistic consequences of doing it or not doing it. Um, so to reject it outright based on 5,000 bugs, I just think that's irresponsible at the level of a tech lead or a director or a CTO. This is going to impact your company for years, whether you decide to do it or not do it, uh, whether you decide to use Flutter or React Native or something else. This, this is a multi-year investment. You need to do more work than that to vet what you're going to go with, right? And especially uh, the interesting part is that when you are targeting multiple platforms all together, then obviously there will be as many as issues because um, you are not dealing with just one single platform here. You are dealing with Android, you are dealing with iOS, maybe Raspberry Pi box are also there. Maybe someone yeah. has like, like me, I have tried to uh, play that uh, like, you know, Flutter application in one of my Galaxy phones, right? So there is that issue as well. So I think it's it's uh, when when you are targeting so many platforms, then obviously there will be different kinds of issue. Some issues are related to Windows, let's say. Some related uh, issues are from Mac OS itself. So and every day, like you know, uh, everyone is upgrading. Like the like Windows is upgrading itself. Mac OS is upgrading. iPad OS is upgrading. So obviously there will be issues for sure. And to all my viewers, that's what I wanted to like. Why I ask this question to Matt because he has worked in the Flutter team and uh, what he like thinks about those issues is very much important to other people like to hear from you.